In chapter one, we looked at Taskman as a way of building a subtractive instrument. But one of the most powerful features of Taskman is the ability to create physical models and really impressive sounding instruments that give you the type of flexibility that uh, we saw when we were doing the subtractive design. So here's a basic setup where we have a, a keyboard module and in this case it's feeding a mallet and the mallet is striking against a beam. This constant is just a, a set value that's uh, that's entering the beam to give it um, to give it to give it a, a certain damping quality. Um, just to keep it simple, we've got a constant value going on that. And then it goes into this poly mixer and then out. Now, uh, in the earlier video, we didn't get into doing polyphonic instruments, but this poly mixer is just needed when you're uh, using a, a, a polyphonic keyboard source. So um, for now, we'll just leave it at that. When I jump over to the player side, we see now that we've got the the poly V key keyboard so that's allowing me to uh, have velocity sensitivity and to play uh, uh, polyphonically and then we have a mallet in the mallet we can choose the stiffness of the mallet and uh, the strength basically how hard it's uh, striking the beam then on the beam we have an overall amplitude which is effectively its volume and the decay so this is um, uh, essentially just the the how long it rings for so so there's not much decay on it right now I'll bring it up all right take the strength down stiffness to a harder mallet softer mallet. So once these components have been reduced to mathematical data, it becomes relatively easy, at least for us as the user, to have an enormous amount of control, far more than we could if these were simply samples. If we had sampled a marimba with a certain type of mallet, we would be stuck with that sound unless we went and we recorded with a whole bunch of different kinds of mallets and used those samples as we needed them. Having these really sophisticated and good sounding models here, it gives us just an incredible amount of options as we're composing, as we're doing sound design to manipulate these different components in real time. In addition to mallets, we can also do string based instruments. So here is a plector or a pick that's affecting a string. If we take a look at the builder side, we have that same polyphonic keyboard and the polyphonic mixer that's assembling all the different pieces back together. And we have a plector, again it's like a guitar pick, and a string. So when we jump over to the player side, what we'll hear is something like this. Pretty convincing damped string sound down the amplitude just a little bit and I am going to change the stiffness of the plector all right so it's almost like if you've ever tried to play a guitar with a with a penny or a quarter you you get this high stiffness which isn't terribly effective get into kind of a medium to hard pick and get into softer picks. And here's our decay control. Now these models are pretty complex and right now the uh, the computer is set, the uh, Tasman is set to limit to two voices so that the load on the computer is minimal. Let me bring it up a little bit higher. I'm going to bring it up to eight voices so we can hear more of a chord ringing. Pretty great sound and as I mentioned before with the beam we just have so much control over what it is we're 
uh, what what it is we're ending up with and so much more so than we could get with just a sample. You can see in our modulation input that damping is one of the input options. So we could use some kind of uh, envelope or we could use a uh, external control like a mod wheel in order to affect uh, how much damping is taking place on that string.